Uh, she's a member of the European Parliament for Greece. Uh, she uh, is appointed coordinator of the left group at the Transport and Tourism Committee and member of the Committees on Women's Rights and Gender Equi Equality, FEMM, Industry Research and Energy, I I ITRE, and Artificial Intelligence, AIDA. As member of the Greek Parliament from 2004 to 2019, she has been appointed secretary to the Standing Committee on monitoring the decisions of the European Court of Human Rights and member of the Greek Parliamentary Assembly at the Council of Europe, PACE. Ms. Contoura has served as the European Parliament Rapporteur on the resolution on the impact of intimate partner violence and custody rights on women and children adopted by a large majority on October 6, 2021. Thank you so much, dear all. I would like to thank you for the invitation to join you in this event held on the eve of the International Day for eliminating violence against women. And also to commend you for your commitment in addressing all the adversities that women victims of violence endure and your work towards bringing the change so much needed. To this end, I will briefly touch upon critical issues that I have addressed uh, through my initiative report as a rapporteur of the European Parliament on the impact of intimate partner, violence, and custody rights on women and children. As you may know, the report was adopted with vast majority by the European Parliament in October's uh, plenary and uh, has been submitted as a resolution to the European Commission to be taken into consideration in its upcoming directive for combating gender-based violence in the EU. With this progressive groundbreaking report, the European Parliament for the first time focuses not only on women, but also on children that they have been impacted either as victims themselves or as witnesses of such violence. We call on the European Commission and all member states to adopt a holistic European framework in support of the fundamental right of every woman and try to a life without violence. Intimate partner violence is a serious, often long-term and hidden social problem that causes systematic physical and psychological trauma. The consequences are grave for the victims with a severe impact on the emotional, economic, and social well-being of the children and the whole family. And as we all know, the statistics are extremely alarming. One in three women has been the victim of physical or sexual abuse. One in five has been abused by her partner or ex-partner, but two out of three do not file a complaint because of the fear, the same uh, blackmail, even the threats for their lives or their children's lives that they received from their abuser. Other obstacles they face are due to the lack of trust in the authorities that they turn to for help and also their economic dependency. Women victims will be forced to stay with the abuser because they have nowhere else to live and zero income for themselves and their children. Still, when they find the strength to get away, the violence might not stop even after the separation. During the pandemic and the lockdowns, domestic violence increased sharply as women and children found themselves in confinement at home 24 hours a day with their abuser. In some member states, reported incidents increased even by 60%. While other reports show that even when lockdown measures were lifted, the abusers reacted even more uh, violently because they lost the control they had gained. And this is reflected in the growing list of femicides and infanticides across Europe. The pandemic has highlighted distortions and legislative gaps that pre-existed in addressing the full spectrum of domestic violence and especially in matters of custody. 
With my report, we ask foremost that the Istanbul Convention be swiftly ratified and implemented by all member states that have not yet done so, but also by the European Union as the first binding international legal text for combating gender-based violence for prevention and for the punishment of uh, perpetrators. We urge the Commission also to include gender-based violence in the Eurocrimes list and to use this as a legal base to propose binding measures and a holistic EU directive to prevent and combat all forms of gender-based violence. We also call on the Commission and the Member States to ensure adequate and universal access for victims to structures and support services and to tackle financial violence against women, including access to housing income and faster payment of benefits such as a child support. We stated the need for specific programs for the perpetrators with the aim of changing the patterns of violent behavior, as well as for a permanent mechanism that must be established against gender-based uh, violence in times of crisis, such as the pandemic. Child abuse is a key criterion uh, in determining custody. Yet, in cases of intimate partner violence, it is often ignored in several member states. The trauma experienced by the child is often underestimated during the uh, judicial uh, proceeding. So is the risk for the child and the mother to be repeatedly abused. This is why in my report, the European Parliament stated uh, clearly that the failure to recognize and address incidents of intimate partner violence in uh, determining child uh, custody and uh, visitation rights is a violation of the right of women and children to a life without violence and is incompatible with the best interest of the child. The protection of women and children from violence and uh, the best interest of the child must be paramount and should always take precedence over other criteria when establishing the arrangement for custody and visitation rights. And when the mother is a victim of violence, we consider that she should be granted full custody and that custody and visitation rights of the abusive partner should be revoked as this is the only way to protect her from further violence and secondary victimization. Both parents must indeed participate actively in the life and unbringing of their child, but not if it is against the best interest of the child. In any case, the European Parliament opposed uh, to mandatory shared custody because its case must be uh, ruled individually based on what is the best interest of the child as uh, defined in the International Convention on the Rights of the Child. Even more in cases with uh, history or even an indication of violence, shared custody decisions should be postponed until adequate investigations and adequate risk assessments have been carried out. Shared custody in situation of intimate uh, partner violence exposes women to a continuum of uh, preventable violence by forcing them to stay in geographical proximity to their abusers and subjecting them to further exposure to physical and psychological violence, as well as emotional abuse, which uh, can have a direct or indirect impact on their children. Moreover, ill treatment of children by perpetrators is often being used to exercise uh, power over and commit acts of violence against the mother victim of uh, violence. A further concern is the so-called parental uh, alienation syndrome and similar concepts and terms. The scientific community does not recognize such terms and criticize them strongly. 
Still, they are often being used by the abusive fathers in the context of intimate partner violence as a strategy against the mother victim of violence, putting into question her parental skills, dismissing her word and uh, disregarding the violence to which children are exposed. This is why in my report, the European Parliament filled me, rejects the use of this uh, uh, pseudo syndrome and calls on the member states not to recognize it in their uh, judicial practice and law and to discourage or even to prohibit its use in court proceedings during the investigations to determine uh, the existence of uh, violence. For these reasons, we consider that custody and separation cases should be adjudicated exclusively from special courts and uh, judges with the support of specialists such as forensic doctors, psychologists, child uh, psychologists and pediatricians. Training must become mandatory for all personnel in the judicial system, in law enforcement, in forcing uh, medical services and healthcare professionals in relation to all forms of violence and its mechanism in handling such cases. It is unacceptable that we mourn the loss of women and children because the competent authorities fail to recognize the risk and react timely. Finally, as we state in our report, I would like to point out the need to support activities in schools and other settings for raising awareness of crime and trauma issues on where to seek help or report such crimes and how to build resilience among children and those working with children. In every strategy regarding prevention against intimate partner violence, action must be included that uh, reduce exposure to violence during childhood and eliminate all forms of sexism and gender stereotypes. The culture of inspiring respect towards human rights and for every human being, regardless of their gender, is the only way of creating healthy relationships and prospects for true progress in our societies. Thank you. On the contrary, thank you very much, uh, Parliamentarian Contura, for your very, very important and interesting uh, participation. 